Hello and welcome back to Vibas. You're still here with myself, Sharita, as well as Ruben. Now, yeah. Ruben, recently I watched the film Okja. Mm. Have you watched it? No. How is it spelled again? O-K-J-A. Oh, okay. What thought... an interesting <laughs> question. Anyway, I'll tell you about the movie. You know, right, right. I thought it was um, the first time in a right. long time that I've seen a movie deal so face forwardly with the topics of the environment and the meat right. industry and all the consequences that it's having on the world itself. But mm. I recently found out, you know, that we've been doing this for a while here in Malaysia, exactly. especially through the Kuala Lumpur Eco Film Festival. Now in its 10th year, the Kuala Lumpur Eco Film Festival is a not for profit and all volunteer run festival supported by environmental NGO Econites. Right. Now, KLEFF showcases groundbreaking films mm. traversing the relationship between humans and their environments, challenging the way people think about the natural world, and inspiring them to discuss, explore, and act on important environmental issues. Today, we sit down with festival director Fadli Bakhtiar and one of the speakers at the very first KLEFF Sustainability Forum series, Rashman Pal Singh, to find out more about what we can expect at the festival. Welcome to Viva, it's Fadli and Rashwin. Thank All you so much right. again Thank for you. having us. All it's right. been a while. I know, I think I've seen you at the very first edition back The second back, one, back the in 2009. Edition, yeah, back in the day, mm, you go wow. way back. Yeah, but you know, uh, Fadli, so I know you're obviously also the program director of Eco Nights. Yes. Um, and you know, when, when, when did the you know, Eco Nights first begin sort of supporting the Kuala Lumpur Eco uh, Film Festival? So it started in 2008. Right. That was mm. the first Eco Film Festival. Um, initiated by Yasmin and uh, her friends and I was that time only a volunteer I was a volunteer okay and then I um, I kind of got into it and uh, you know short story now right. it's on the 10th anniversary 10 years this year. on 10 years <laughs> yeah, man yeah. yes right so you've been there since you know day one and you know you've, you've seen the ups and downs and of course yeah so right. I'm, I'm so grateful to, to be part Brilliant. of it yeah you have your black still so it's very good 10 years on <laughs> <laughs> yep Fadi could you tell us a little bit more about the history yeah. of the festival so we started in 2008 and yeah. I said mm -hmm. before and um, we started quite big in terms of the reach that time but it was okay. the first mm -hmm. um, ever environmental film festival in Malaysia exactly but then we only had six local films and eight international films. That was okay. in 2008. And now? And after 10 years, on average now, for the past three, four years, we received submissions of at least 250 films wow. from over 40 countries. Yes. And this year alone, we are screening 86 films from over 30 countries in various issues. Mm. Um, okay you know, around the environmental um, subjects. Right, okay, which brings me to the next question. What, what sort of films can I expect here? Like, mm. you know, if I come for the, you know, KLEFF, what can I expect? Um, all sorts of films, really. Mm -hmm. Everything okay. related to environment, from pollution, from uh, waste, from um, even meat industry. Yep. And right. um, we have, again, uh, out of these 86 films, uh, <coughs> we have selected 10 official selections, Right. just with thought was like the the best films this year that okay. you should watch and one of the films called Empathy mm -hmm. from Spain mm. is one of the official selections and it's about the meat industry ah. that is happening wow. and I saw it because I was I'm one of the juries right. and it's I was mind blown by it. Okay. Wow. wow, definitely got to check that out. But you know, mm. you'll also be having um, various speakers at the festival, and um, Rashwin, you are one of the speakers. We'll be speaking about that later. But yep. first, why do you think festivals like this are significant mm. to the environmental movement? Well, so I guess for starters, I mean, when we spoke about Ecofilm Fest and why mm -hmm. it came about, was that there was a lack of local content, I think, yeah. right? And oftentimes, whenever you're looking, to educate yourself or to inspire, we oftentimes end up looking at things that happen in Europe or in mm -hmm. America. Exactly. When actually there is like fantastic work yeah. happening within the region. Mm -hmm. That's true. So I think Ecofilm Fest definitely does an amazing job to highlight that. Yeah. And mm -hmm. to sort of like, you know, to see things that are happening closer to home, mm -hmm. but also have the international um, mm. reach where you can kind of look at how, because yeah. whilst these things are very r local, regional issues, mm. they have international implications. Mm -hmm. You mm. know, apart from, you know, highlighting these great works, do you think it also plays a big role in raising awareness amongst Malaysians on these issues? Yeah, it does a fantastic job at that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think apart from raising awareness, I mean, I guess in today's world, there's quite a few mediums you can yeah. get awareness from, mm. right? Mm -hmm. But I think what it does by having an actual on-the-ground event yep. is you right. actually get to meet like-minded people 
So mm-hmm. we were talking about how, like, even when we met, it was yeah. at the festival. Oh. Right. You know, one of the yeah. first times we met, or probably the first time we met at the yeah. festival. Right. You so know? you were attending just back then? Yeah, yeah just 10 yeah. years ago. I mean, maybe wow. like the 6th or 7th one, but you know, just as a regular right. public car goer, just a regular person going to right. the festival. Like, yeah. Okay. And, and of course, there's so many inter- interesting topics that you guys are going to be, you know, you're going to touch base on when you're at uh, the Eco Film Festival. Uh, one of them being um, waste management, right? Yeah. So, could you tell us, you know, what's sort of like the biggest issue, Rashvin, when it comes to waste management and and what we're actually facing right now, mm. the reality of it? Yep. Well, so of course, the whole waste topic is a huge exactly. topic. Exactly. Um, but I think, I mean, of course, within that, there's recycling and all the things to do beyond. But I think when we talk about waste, it's very um, retrospective. Mm-hmm. It's already been created, mm-hmm. right? So yeah. I, w- I think if it's the main problem would be one step before that, yeah. which is in consumption behavior, which is the direct cause, the root cause okay. of mm-hmm. waste. Right? Right. So our consumption behavior has kind of gone out of whack. Right. Does it, right. Does it sort of like start with us at home ourselves? Yes. Like, you know, so how do we... Exactly. I mean, to, to start with, let's just look at single-use plastic. Right? Okay. I mean, how many times in a day do we use or single-use packaging, single-use materials? Mm. It's quite. I mean, no, no, no offense. Even I myself am uh, like guilty of these things, mm-hmm. right? Right, right? You go, you want this Milo packet, you're like, okay lah, you get it, you know, you have it straight away. Right. But then like bunko's drinks and all that. But how often do we consume <laughs> single-use yeah. plastics? You yeah. know, which is quite sad because you use something literally for thirty seconds or for two minutes and then. It waste. You know, I'm, I'm kind of glad you brought that up, um, uh, Rashmin. Mm. And we have a culture where we, you know, we're so used to, you know, as to taking away exactly. and kind of yeah. eating out of certain types of material. Yeah. Is it possible for us as Malaysians, do you think, to live a zero waste lifestyle, mm. or, or are we kind of moving towards that direction? Do you think, um, mm. Fadli? What, what do you think? I think it's zero waste is um, a, a very long reach. I think yeah. I, I agree with uh, Rashvin. Uh, we f- want to focus more on the single-use yeah. materials. Mm-hmm. Um, in fact, um, plastic was only discovered ov- over about 30, less than 40 years ago. Exactly. Yeah. So what were our grandparents mm-hmm. use before plastic? Yeah. Yeah. They can live thing. with it. <laughs> they <laughs> can live with it. So it's because the plastic is a, a, a fantastic product. Okay. No, no, yeah. it's, it's, it's a fantastic it is amazing product. material. Except yeah. that the single-use is really bad. Mm-hmm. Because the other type, there are other types of plastics that you can recycle, you can okay. reuse. So right. that one, we are okay. Like all the tumblers, mm-hmm. the food packaging yep. that you can reuse, right. which is what we do in our in our office yeah. at home. But yeah. going back to what you just said, so what did our grandfathers use? For right. years ago? Uh, Christian, right? Yeah. I'm still wondering. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I've been wondering about that yeah, ever since you mentioned How did they bunkos drinks? That's a good question. Right? Oh, yeah, I mean, they have the tea pins, you know, yeah, like right. the tea pins when you go to work and uh-huh. bring the tea pins. Mm-hmm. Right. They have and their of course, own there are those, those, those concepts, um, stores where everything is in bulk and it's all out there and everybody yeah. just comes yeah. with yeah. their own home yeah. containers. And, and, even, and, you and see even that a lot for overseas. fridge, refrigerators, okay. um, they cook whatever they need. They don't overcook things mm-hmm. like in, a, in a, a huge amount and keep right. it again and then you don't use it and it's, um, you know, it's wasted. Mm. So and they cook whatever they need. It's just about what you need. Yeah, yeah, Rashvin, you were saying. Hey, we can add something on this, right? So, I mean, single-use plastic is one. So, of course, the solutions that you ask are quite straightforward, right? It's bringing your own tumbler. It's, you know, having your, bringing your own glass to the yeah. shop. So, what you'd find is quite funny is that now, if you were to start doing this, okay, right? I, I mean, this is just my opinion. Maybe yeah, you can yeah. jump in, right? I find that people actually make it difficult for you. So, now, if you start bringing your own tumbler, people look at you, hey, why lah, bro? Suddenly, yeah. Yeah, yeah, save yeah, the yeah, yeah. So true. I want to save the planet. Uh. Yeah. You know, people are not very encouraging. Yeah. And I find that usually when you start to say, oh, I'm going to go vegetarian today once, once yeah. a week, or I'm going yeah. to start using this, people at yeah. first have very, like, apprehensive, like, hey, why lah, suddenly, oh, oh, oh. And you're like, I, I imagine, I wish people were more yeah. supportive. Yeah. And <laughs> so at the end of the day, it's peer pressure like that. that a bit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know no, I mean? we definitely need to cultivate, you know, a culture yeah. where we're, we're all aware of these issues and we support one another when we True. take our own first steps to helping out the environment. Yeah. But, mm-hmm. you know, apart from waste management, what are some of the other environmental issues that will be highlighted during the KLEFF? Well, again, uh, as you mentioned earlier, um, this year is the first time we are organizing the Sustainability Forum series. Mm-hmm. We have three forums okay. that talks about food for future. Okay. So we have speakers talk about food, and then there's also women leadership. Okay. So uh, a group of um, successful women in environmental okay. sectors talk about 
you know, there's challenges, you mm -hmm. know, not. we have a lot of workshops. Like Yasin Rashid. Yeah, we have, yeah. <laughs> we have Green Market, right. which uh, offers a lot of uh, sustainable consumption and production products mm -hmm. to the public. Performances, we have a Wajabumi Art Exhibition mm -hmm. by six wow. international and local artists. So it's really about m getting people immersed in right. um, a natural world mm -hmm. um, um, in a fun and engaging way. Brilliant. Mm. So it's really for everyone to come mm. and and uh, and learn something in their own um, mm. style, in their own yeah, ways. Exactly. But you know, Rashvin, you're also going to be one of the speakers, of course. So it's it's yes. um, it's exciting to know. You know what? What are the themes and the topics that you'd sort of rather bring up that yep. you would want also other speakers to sort of like delve into? Mm. So I guess some of the topics we are looking at is kind of trying to give very um, realistic mm. and practical ways to do these things. Right. Right. I mean, like I was saying earlier, I don't think we're in a time where we're short of access to information. Okay. Everyone's quite... So we were talking about this just before, right? How yep. a lot of them are going to come to the festival okay. are going to be well aware of these issues. Okay. Right? They're not going to come there for the... And, oh, okay, I didn't know this. Oh, yeah. wow, a lot of people are actually aware of these things. Yeah. yeah. Now, what happens after you're aware of these things? Mm -hmm. So that's what we want to tackle mm. in the talks. Right? We want you, want you to come there and for you to listen firsthand, not from the big, big, you know, global... I mean, it is a UN agenda, yeah. right? But not from like, oh, what is WWF? Or what is it some of the biggest people's doing? But what yeah. can you as an individual today, or yeah. you as a collective of five or eight people, what can you start doing? Mm -hmm. exactly. And you know, and on that yeah. note, is there any kind of quick tips that you can share with any of our viewers out there who might not have the time to com mm. come on yeah. down to the actual um, festival itself, what can they do in mm. their day-to-day -day lives to start living yeah. a little bit more eco-friendly? I mean, well, well, there's a lot of things that you yeah. can start doing, but I would say the first action would be like, of course, you're yeah, minding your consumption, so to actually be aware of mm -hmm. what you're consuming and where you're consuming from. So looking at the packaging and, you know, from shopping at shopping with supermarkets, start shopping yeah. from your local farmer, mm -hmm. like standard things. But I would really think it's about action, you know, mm -hmm. I think people need to stop talking and yep. start doing. True. Because you really can find, I mean, I can give you 10 tips now, yeah. over like lo local farmers, take your own bags, yeah. Yeah. you know, um, take your bunkers bags, you know, mm -hmm. what the things mm -hmm. you can do, but at yeah. the end of the day, like, these tips are available online. Yeah. If you don't do it, Right. Yes. So, you know, this is going to be the 10th. I can't believe you're saying it's the 10th. Mm. I, you know, I'm still I'm fresh in my mind, say, eight years ago when I met you. But, yeah. uh, you know, this is the 10th anniversary of the festival itself. Yes. You know, how will KL EFF be celebrating that milestone of 10 years? Well, when we had this idea, how do we celebrate the 10th anniversary? And then we decided to do it for one week long. <laughs> It's, it's a crazy idea because this is the longest right. festival that we're going to organize. Okay. But then again, um, we believe that there's so many great content, right. people that we can work with, right. you know, like Rajvin, all yeah. the speakers, um, all of our partners. And I, I think it's to show to the country mm. that after 10 years, environmental movement and awareness is taking another step, yeah. which is to really mobilize like-minded people mm -hmm. to be there and to to take action because yeah. we love our country That's we true. love the world and this yeah. is the only place we have yeah. mm. Mm. and there's no other way for this generation and the next generation yeah. to move forward but to take care of the environment. Mm. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Nicely said, you know, yeah. and mm. on the topic of taking action, a lot of people can take action by actually coming to this festival yes. as a first step. Yeah. Where can they get more information? So they can always go to our website, kleff.my. Mm -hmm. All of the informations are there. If For faster information, they can go to our Facebook. Right. Just type KL Eco Film Festival, okay. you'll find it. And for Rashmin? Yeah, you can of course check out BGBG's website. Mm -hmm. All right, yeah. Um, right. Or even Mareka, which is our newly really really? launched um, educational space where we're looking to inspire people with hands-on skills, right. Right? whether it's wooden metal or electronics or renewable yeah. energy, and where how they can learn these things and apply it themselves. Mm, you know yeah. what? Nice. Yeah, definitely I'll be heading to those sites to Yes, you know, we're going to make sure we see you guys. I'll give you two <laughs> yes. all, all, all week past. <laughs> both yeah. of you. yeah, so 23rd, 29th yes, uh, October, yeah. right? All right, so all the best, start. guys. Thank you very much. Definitely. All right, thank, thank you, so Rashfin. And also thank you to Fadli. And of course, you know, mm -hmm. unlike certain movies that tell you that you can, you know, go and stay in the moon or you can move to mm -hmm. Mars, you know, this is the only place that we have, yeah. like they said, you know, so we got to take care of it. Very, very true. Yeah. And you know what's 
um, interesting to note here as well. We actually had Rashman on the show as one of our first social enterprises years ago from BGBG. And I wasn't a host back then, right? You know, not, I neither was so. I. You know, we've come full circle and look at the great work that I they're know. doing. I'm really looking Amazing forward stuff. to this festival. But tomorrow on Vibas, the director of Slurp tells us how this specialized system is addressing the challenges of managing F&B outlets in Malaysia. Rohan Marshall and Jia Lik Fu of People Systems also join us to talk, uh, to talk about how leaders can be accountable for their subordinates. Mm -hmm. now keep writing to us at vibas at astro.com. Mind, do keep up with us on our brand new Instagram page at Astro Oligam as well. Yep, that's all from yeah. us tonight. My name's Sharita. My name is Ruben. It's bye-bye for now. We'll see you again tomorrow.